Hello, my name is Kevin Craig. I have created 12 modules on electronics and measurement for mechatronics. Modern engineering practice requires that engineers model, analyze, and predict before they measure. What is mechatronics? The diagram you see I created in 1995 as a professor at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. It is now used throughout the world to represent the field known as mechatronics. Mechatronics is multidisciplinary systems engineering. It is the synergistic integration of physical systems, electronics, controls, and computers through the design process from the very start of the design process. These modules present the fundamentals of electronics and measurement for mechatronics. This is module 10 on the MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. The MOSFET is the most widely used transistor in the world today. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. It's one of the many members of the FET Field Effect Transistor family. We will look at the E-MOSFET, the Enhancement Mode MOSFET, used in circuits. The Depletion Mode MOSFET, the D-MOSFET, is similar and is also used. In a MOSFET, one of its connectors, the gate, is insulated from the other connectors, the drain and the source. The key to its operation is the field effect. Device operation comes about from the electric field produced when a voltage is applied to the gate. It is, this is a voltage controlled device. Shown is a diagram of the N-channel enhancement MOSFET. It consists of three points of connection, the gate, the source, and the drain. The substrate is usually connected to the source internally. The gate consists of a metal electrode mounted on a metal oxide insulator. There are two types of semiconductor material, an N-type between which the source and the drain is an is a N-type channel through which current flows, and then a P-type substrate. Here is the circuit representation of the N-channel enhancement MOSFET. The gate, the drain, the source, the substrate connected to the source. The arrow indicates the diagram from the P-type material to the N-type material. The dashed line between the drain, the substrate, and the source, rather than a solid line, indicates that in order for this to be turned on, a positive voltage needs to be sent to the gate. So with zero volts to the gate, this is a normally off transistor. This transistor is inexpensive. It's the most widely used field effect transistor. It is a field effect transistor because no current flows through the gate. It is a voltage controlled device. It is very small. The size is about 10 nanometers and getting smaller every year. Consider that the size of a human hair is about 0 0.09 millimeters in diameter. That says that about 9,000 of these can be fit in the width of a human hair. This is a voltage control device. The gate voltage controls current flow through the MOSFET.
Here is another diagram of the N-channel E-MOSFET. As I said, it's made from two types of semiconductor material, the N-type in the source, the N-type in the drain, the P-type in the substrate. We see the gate that's insulated from the semiconductor material. And normally the substrate is connected internally to the source. The eMOSFET is a four terminal device with a gate, a source, a drain, and the substrate connection. And as I said, usually the substrate is connected internally to the source, making it a three terminal device. The gate is not connected directly to the semiconductor at all. It is insulated from the rest of the device with this layer of insulation. That's why this is often called an insulated gate field effect transistor, an IG-FET. Here are circuit representations of the enhancement MOSFET. And there are two versions. There's an N-channel enhancement MOSFET and a P-channel enhancement MOSFET. The only difference between them is the direction of the arrow. The arrow points from the P-type material to the N-type material. So we see the P-type material is in the source and the channel is an N-type material. And it's the opposite in the P-channel enhancement MOSFET. The word enhancement means that with zero volts to the gate, the MOSFET transistor is off. It does not conduct. Here are several other diagrams of the N-channel and P-channel enhancement MOSFET. Here is the N-channel gate drain source with the P-channel substrate and the N-channel drain and source. The P-channel is the opposite. The N-channel MOSFET is called an enhancement MOSFET, as is the P-channel MOSFET called the enhancement MOSFET because the application of the gate voltage enhances the conducting channel for both the N channel and the P channel. The enhancement type is a normally open switch. The depletion type is a normally closed switch. The difference in the representation is that the enhancement MOSFET, the line here for the drain, substrate, source is a dashed line. For the depletion type, it's a solid line. The arrow direction indicates whether it is an N-type or a P-type enhancement MOSFET or depletion MOSFET. The N-channel enhancement MOSFET as we said, is normally off. Again, as shown here, diagrams we've seen, just a little bit larger, gate, drain, source. This is an N-channel MOSFET, substrate connected internally to the source. And here is a side view of that N-channel MOSFET, the gate, the metal, the insulator, the N-type semiconductor material, the P-type semiconductor material, the three connectors, gate, drain, source, with the body or substrate internally connected to the source. The external electric field is used to vary the conductivity of the channel, this N-type channel causing the vice to behave either as a voltage-controlled resistor or as a voltage-controlled current source. This is a voltage-controlled device as no current flows 
from the gate into the MOSFET. And here is another representation that we've already seen with the dashed line representing the enhancement mode and the direction of the arrow telling us that this is an this is a n-type MOSFET. Again, some more of the same, just various ways to describe the construction and operation of the n-channel eMOSFET. Gate, source, drain, insulator, metal, n-type semiconductor, p-type semiconductor. It's an enhancement mode because the electric field improves the conduction in the channel. When the gate is made positive, so from zero volts to a positive voltage, electrons are attracted into this region between the source and the drain, form a conducting channel. The collection of electrons forms a channel between the n-type drain and source regions allowing a current to flow in either direction. The collection of electrons effectively changes the material in this region from p-type to n-type, and it's called then an inverted channel. In normal operation, if there's no voltage applied to the gate, then what we have between the two n-type materials is a depletion region. As the gate voltage is increased above what we will call as a threshold voltage, then this depletion region gets larger and an inversion layer appears through which current flows. The action of the electric field improves the conduction of the channel, hence it is called an enhancement mode device. Once a gate voltage is reached to produce an inverted channel, and that voltage is the threshold voltage, V sub TH, increasing the gate voltage further causes more drain current to flow from the drain to the source. The device requires no current to flow in the input to the gate, as the input to the gate has a resistance that is almost infinite. So as we see here in this simple experiment, if I have a drain source voltage, which I keep constant, and I vary the gate source voltage, and I gradually increase it from zero, once I get to the threshold voltage, which is in the one to five volt range, current starts to flow. Drain current starts to flow when V, the voltage from the gate to the source, reaches V threshold. And you see the curve that represents the current, the drain current, the current that flows from the drain to the source, how it increases. And this drain current is a function of the voltage from the gate to the source. And it depends on this point, an actual measured value, where the gate source voltage and the drain current correspond to each other, along with the threshold voltage. So we can predict the current that will flow initially once we exceed the threshold voltage. Now, if you fix the gate source voltage and see how varying the drain source voltage affects the drain current, I sub D, we will see that with the gate source voltage kept constant, as the drain source voltage, which is now variable, is increased from zero, what we find is the drain current increases 
linearly until at some point further increases in the drain source voltage will have no effect on the drain current and its value remains constant. So we see as the drain source voltage is increased, because it's variable now, for a constant value of the gate source voltage, initially the current increases linearly, and then it will then become constant and stay that way no matter how much we increase the drain source voltage. The region of linear behavior is called the ohmic region. Here, the drain source resistance is constant and very low. The constant current region is called the saturation region. Here, the drain source resistance increases as the drain source voltage is increased. If we do this experiment over and over again by increasing the gate source voltage in steps, we will produce this family of curves. So the linear region, called ohmic because it behaves like a resistor, and the saturation region, current, drain current depends on the size of the gate source voltage. These define the two modes of device operation and they're separated by the point drain source voltage equals the gate source voltage minus the threshold voltage. I can represent these three regions, cutoff, saturation, triode, or ohmic, by showing a graph on the horizontal axis, the gate source voltage, on the vertical axis, the gate drain voltage, and then show the threshold voltage with these dashed lines on both axes. In the cutoff region, the gate source voltage is less than the threshold voltage. There is no inversion layer, no current flows. In the triode region, the gate source voltage is greater than the threshold, but the drain source voltage is less than the difference of the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. This is a linear region where the device acts like a voltage controlled resistor. Once the drain source voltage gets greater than the gate source voltage minus the threshold voltage, the drain source voltage gets larger than that difference, then we have the saturation region where the inversion layer which was created in the ohmic region now gets pinched. And what we have is a voltage controlled current source. Consider this situation. We have our N-channel enhancement MOSFET. We have a resistor R sub D. We have a voltage supply VDD, a voltage supply VGG. And then we have our three voltages, the gate drain voltage, the gate source voltage, and the drain source voltage. The three modes of operation are the cutoff mode. Here, the gate source voltage is less than the threshold voltage. The drain current is zero. The drain source resistance is very large. In the ohmic region, the linear region, where we have a variable resistor, a voltage controlled resistor, the gate source voltage is greater than the threshold voltage and the drain source voltage is less than the difference of the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. This is the ohmic or linear region where the device behaves like a voltage controlled resistor. And we see that here in the shaded region with the equations that apply. 
the current, the drain current I sub D is equal to the drain source voltage divided by the drain source resistance, where the drain source resistance is given by this equation, where K sub N is what is called a conductance coefficient, and it depends on the properties of the channel. The third region is the saturation region, which is the region to the right of this dashed line. Here, the drain source voltage is greater than the difference between the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. Here, current is constant. The gate source voltage controls the value of that current, the drain current. The change in current with drain source voltage is zero. The slope is, line is horizontal, the slope is zero. And this point of separation between region two and region three, at that node, that point of intersection, the drain source voltage equals the difference between the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. Here is another set of curves that shows that same result. The region to the left of this curved line is our ohmic region or linear region. The region to the right is our saturation region. And the conductance parameter K depends on the channel width, the channel length, charge carrier mobility, and the oxide layer capacitance. Another representation of those same curves. Here we have our MOSFET, two supply voltages, VGG, VDD, the drain current, the gate drain voltage, drain source voltage, gate source voltage. On the horizontal axis, we plot the drain source voltage. On the vertical axis, we plot the drain current. To the left of this curved line is the ohmic region where the device behaves like a voltage controlled resistor. To the right, we have the saturation region where the device behaves like a voltage controlled current source. And again, at the bottom, we have our cutoff region where the gate source voltage is less than the threshold voltage. Here is a, another diagram of the MOSFET characteristic curves on which I have drawn a red line called the load line that connects a point on the vertical axis that shows the drain current to be equal to the supply voltage VDD divided by the drain source resistance. And the other point of intersection with the horizontal axis is the point where the drain current is zero, which happens when the drain source voltage equals the supply voltage VDD. Using this load line, which has a slope of minus one over the drain source resistance, I can understand the behavior of the MOSFET in some given circumstances. Here is an example of the use of the load line. Suppose I have a situation here where I have a supply voltage VDD, a resistor RD, and I have my MOSFET with a supply voltage VGG equal to 2.4 volts. I have my characteristic curves for my MOSFET. I draw the load line by noting that Kirchhoff's voltage law says the sum of the voltages around this closed path must equal zero. 
So I have a voltage increase of VDD minus a voltage drop across the resistor, which is drain current times the value of the resistance, R sub D, minus VDS, that has to equal zero. That's what this equation says. If I substitute in values for VDD and RD, my two unknowns are I sub D and VDS. I recognize that the intersection of the load line with the vertical axis occurs when VDS is zero. In other words, VDD equals ID times RD, or ID is 100 milliamps. On the horizontal axis, when ID is equal to zero, then VDS is equal to VDD, which is 10 volts. The intersection of this load line with the value of VGG, 2.4 volts, is my operating point. And IDQ is 52 milliamps, and the voltage DSQ is equal to 4.75 volts. So the summary of the E MOSFET action is as follows. When the gain source voltage is less than the threshold voltage, no current flows, and the drain source resistance is very large. When the gate source voltage is greater than the threshold voltage, this drain source resistance drops to a low value, drain current flows. And it's given by this expression, where we need to have data for an operating point, ID on, V gate source on, along with the threshold voltage to calculate that current. Once current starts to flow, the E MOSFET is in one of two modes. The linear or ohmic mode, when the drain source voltage is less than this difference, of the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. And then the saturation or the current mode when the drain source voltage is greater than the difference between the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. A MOSFET has a large input capacitance and the gate capacitor draws a short-lived charging current before switching. And this reduces switching speed. Here we consider the MOSFET to be used as a switch. In this diagram, the input and the gate are grounded, zero volts. The gate source voltage is less than the threshold voltage. The MOSFET is off in the cutoff region. No drain current flows. V out equals VDS equals VDD. The MOSFET operates as an open switch. Here, the input and gate are connected to VDD. The gate source voltage is much greater than the threshold voltage. The MOSFET is on in the saturation region. Maximum drain current flows, ID is equal to VDD divided by RL. The drain source voltage is ideally equal to zero volts. The minimum channel resistance, the drain source resistance when it's on is less than 0.1 ohms. The output voltage is equal to the drain source voltage, which is approximately equal to 0.2 volts due to the drain source resistance when it's on. And the MOSFET operates as a low resistance closed switch. To understand the behavior of the MOSFET, here is a series of experiments that one should perform. Here is the physical setup. We have two power supplies, one for VGG, one for VDD. And we have our MOSFET with the drain current, the gate source voltage, gate drain voltage, 
drain source full. And our characteristic curves for the MOSFET. The objectives of the study are to study the current versus voltage MOSFET characteristics and use the MOSFET as a variable resistor and then as a switch. In part one, we'll set VDD to five volts. We'll determine the value of the gate source voltage at which current becomes negligible. And we'll call this the threshold voltage. In part two, we'll set VGG to five volts. We'll vary VDD from zero to five volts and measure the drain source current. We'll plot the drain source current versus the drain source voltage for a constant value of VGG. Then we'll repeat this for a value of VGG equal to three volts and then one volt and we'll plot all the data on the same graph. Let's consider the behavior as a voltage controlled resistor. The curves plotted should all pass through the origin and their shape should be a straight line for small values of the drain source voltage. In this region, the drain source current is approximately proportional to the drain source voltage. We have a linear resistor. The resistance value is the drain source voltage divided by the drain source current. And it's the inverse of the slope of the curves near the point where the drain source voltage is zero. The slope depends on the value of the gate source voltage. So the gate source voltage can be used to control the resistance value the voltage controlled resistor. We then determine the resistance graphically for the gate source voltage values of five volts, three volts, and one volt. We will then disconnect power supply two and connect the multimeter between the drain and source to measure the resistance. We want to verify that the resistance can be varied by varying the gate source voltage. And we need to keep in mind that the drain source voltage is small. Lastly, we want to examine the behavior of the MOSFET as a voltage controlled switch. From the results so far, you can see that if the gate source voltage is sufficiently small, the MOSFET behaves as an open circuit between the drain and the source. The drain source path acts as an open switch. Also, you can see that with the gain source voltage large, the MOSFET presents a small resistance between the source and drain, always with the drain source voltage small. If that resistance were zero, the MOSFET would behave as a closed ideal switch. Since the resistance is not zero, we can say that it behaves as a closed non-ideal switch, that is a closed ideal switch with some resistance in series with it. The MOSFET can be viewed as a voltage controlled switch. The switch closes if VGS is made large and opens if VGS is made small. So this concludes then our brief discussion on the MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, the most widely used transistor in the world today. Thank you for your attention.